I'm Anthony Rapp, and you are watching Click On This, and you can also listen to the podcast Below the Belt. Yes! <laughs>thank you here at awesome con 2022 yes how's your awesome con experience been so far Anthony? Been super friendly uh which i'm not totally surprised but i've spent a lot of time in dc working and doing a lot of uh, stage performances here so it's a really big theater town and so there's a lot of people who have a big crossover feel of like rent and discovery both or you know or even in some ways probably tipping more into rent yeah it's cool Wow. So how, why is it important that an actor still goes through their theater roots uh, after doing so much television film? I mean, I think it's like the true kind of arena for an actor. Yes. You know, being able to be in front of a live audience and with fellow artists on stage right. telling the story in real time. That challenge, I think, is kind of the ultimate challenge. Right. Although I do, like, I love watching people on film and television. Like, when a great performance... In that medium, mm -hmm. I'm all about it. But I will also carry with me the, my memories of the great stage performances. And the fact that it has to be a memory only is also part of what makes it so special. Awesome. Of course, a lot of fans know you uh, from Star Trek Discovery. Uh, wow. Uh, how many seasons? Uh, four or five seasons already? We've done four seasons. We're about That's to start our fifth. Start the fifth season. Wow. Uh, has it exceeded your expectations that it would be such a success? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, I've been around long enough to know you never know. Like, right. it's, I felt like there would be something of an audience that wanted to see what we were doing. But yeah. the way we've been embraced has been wonderful. And the way that it's relaunched the entire Star Trek universe yes. is very exciting to be a part of that ongoing legacy. And that's one of the most passionate fan bases. The Star Trek fan yeah. base has been just so, so overwhelming. Um, any interesting fan experiences uh, over the years? Uh, maybe saw your twin cosplayer. I've seen, yeah, I've seen, I've <laughs> or, seen like, I saw a really great like kid cosplayer doing yeah. Stamets. That was really cool. And then yeah. I've seen gender bent Stamets, which is really okay. cool. Um, yeah, I, it's an honor. Any kind of cos. I've seen Mark cosplay over the years. Yes. Cosplay is, is a really meaningful way to be honored. Right. By people, you know, it means that the character had an, an sort of enough of an impact that they wanted to kind of embody yeah. themselves. That's really cool. Um, you know, people people talk about their relationship to Trek and Rent mm -hmm. in terms of how it changed their lives, not right. simply something they enjoy. Right. And that's really meaningful. And, you know, there are people who talk about... I'm not exaggerating, but people who, like there at, a, at the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas, I remember so distinctly somebody talked about he was contemplating suicide and his friend asked him to please sit down with him and watch some Trek with him. And oh. watching it reminded him of the of things to hope for and aspire to, you know, of the greater the greater good of, you know, being a part of a community of trying to be your best self. And it was part of what brought him out of that suicidal ideation. That is an amazing 
story. Uh, actually, Star Trek saves lives. Yes. You, you, you heard that here. It's, yes. It actually saves lives. And uh, just uh, just the influence that uh, that your show and many of the other shows, because uh, Paramount has so many great... What, what do you think of the expansion of the Star Trek uh, universe I mean, on Paramount? It's pretty cool Picard, because... Picard, all yeah. these other shows. But it's yeah. cool because each show also yeah. really has its own kind of signature and its yeah. own kind of like little nook of it. And yeah. I think it's great that there's that room for all these different kinds of stories and all these different kinds of characters to be uh, mm -hmm. shared with the world. It's, it's, right. it's exciting to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just like, and there's nothing that feels like cookie cutter about it. Lower Decks is certainly nothing like what we're doing. Right. And, and Prodigy is certainly, not, even, not, even though they're both animated, they're also mm -hmm. very different in a really exciting way. Strange New Worlds mm -hmm. draws on, you know, there's a couple of characters in Strange New Worlds who are on our show, but mm -hmm. it's taking it into another little new direction. So yeah. all of it is very, very cool. Awesome. Now, you've been a part of Star Trek fandom. What other big fandom would you love to be a part of? Star Wars, Marvel, DC, is there a particular one that you would absolutely love to be a part of? Well, I... I never imagined myself being in. I always, I've been such a fan of all of these things mm -hmm. for so long that I never even yeah. dared to imagine myself in them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to be part of the DC universe in part because I grew up. That was my favorite comic book stuff as a kid. Yes. So, and in particular, I would like to be a villain. In the, ah. in the, I think the DC villains are really, really cool. Any particular one come to mind? The Riddler comes to mind. The Riddler, yes. All right. So that, you know, I'm just putting that out there. That's I, something I would I can see that happening. Although we had a version of the Riddler in the Batman. Yeah, which I have Robert not gotten Pattinson. to see yet. I was working when it was out in the theater that I mm -hmm. kind of wanted to see in the theater. I have to see it at mm -hmm. home now, which is a bummer because mm -hmm. I'd rather see it on a big screen. But right. Anyway, you know. There's one that I could see you playing, Booster Gold. Sure, but he's kind of a dummy. <laughs> You got the blonde hair. I know, you know? <laughs> but do you want? I don't really want to play a dummy. <laughs> I think he's more funny than dummy. <laughs> he's a little bit of a dumb dumb though. I'm sorry. All right, we got to talk about scrap because uh, we got to throw out Elena Moscat, uh, our fearless leader from the Baltimore Next Media Web Fest. Yeah. Your film Scrap at the time was a short film. Yes. Uh, featured in the Baltimore Next Media Web Fest. Uh, Web Fest, but now. You're just telling me that it's uh, become a, fe a yeah, feature? Yeah, it was. That was. Yeah. I think that was Vivian Kerr who wrote it and yeah. started it. I think it was always her hope and intention. Yeah. And she did expand it into a really strong feature screenplay. And then she got back in touch with me. I was very grateful to be, you know, for that loyalty. Wow. And because um, I really loved working with her. And I think it's really interesting material and a really cool character. Uh, and we shot our this very low budget, but really well done feature last summer. And uh, it's been edited together, and I think that they're like now trying to try to get into festival. So I'm hoping that it will have a life. Wow! It's, it's I mean, really the short did so well on the festival circuit. Cool. And now we uh, we have this feature. Um, uh, tell us what we could expect from the feature. I mean, it just you get a lot more uh, sort of in depth and nuance of the nature of the relationship between the brother and sister. Yeah. And you find out more about some of their family history, but it doesn't go into. It's not like it's a soap opera but it but you just get enough of a you get enough of a sense of the context of their relationship mm -hmm. that i think is really really cool and then you also get more of a sense of my mm -hmm. character's relationship with his wife and what they're going through ah. um and sort of the the web of family and you know ah. the the com the complexities of it uh, intricate family drama yeah but like yes. and also you know funny but like very, it, feels very, funny it feels moments. very human in, in a way that that's the kind of work that I really respond to as a as a as an audience member, and it's really cool to be a part of that kind of work as an actor. Awesome! Any other awesome projects for promote? Um, I got to actually direct a short film myself, so that's gonna oh, we're cool. just in the editing process now, and hopefully that will be seeing the light of day in the festival circuit down the road too. Awesome. That my friend Noah wrote. Um, it's called Type One, and uh, I think it's come together pretty well. So. Awesome. Wow. And of course, uh, uh, season five, green lit of Star Trek Discovery, uh, scrap feature film, a lot, a lot in the works for Anthony Rapp. Sure, you know, sure. That's try, awesome. Try <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Mike the General Zod from Below the Belt Show, and we are here at Awesome Con. You know, it's, it's in the name. So, and I am here with the amazing actress Beth Broderick. Well, thank you. Yeah. Probably most famously known for people our age with um, uh, on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but she has a vast career that uh, has accomplished a lot. And so, first of all, thank you very much for uh, 
Thank you very much for taking the time with us. Of course, my pleasure, my pleasure. And I guess the first thing I'd, I'd like to ask you is, uh, since you know you are known to uh, to uh, most people from *Sabrina the Teenage Witch*, like, what? How do you like? How do you feel that even many years later, it's like such a part of like the public consciousness? It's such a privilege to be part of something that has has gone on from generation to generation to generation making people happy and making people laugh and mm -hmm. you know we're still pretty much running every day in every country in the world and that's a phenomenon I, so, I, can, I mean I could never argue with that it's, it's, a, it's a gift and it's a pleasure Oh, that's that's so great to see, and like you know, you get to you get to come to great events like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to meet people. We're so grateful for our fans, and I'm always grateful to be able to spend time with Melissa and Caroline. So it all works out. Of course. What is, what is your opinion, for instance, of the like? Were you familiar with Sabrina at all before you took the job? I really wasn't, but when they sent me the script, I read it, and I said to myself, "Well, I'm going to be Aunt Zelda." And it's going to be a hit. I just knew it. I have a. Uh, it's 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 kind of a funny little anecdote. I mean, it's. Um, I'll say this: when when the show came, first came out, you know, I wasn't exactly the target market for it because I was already in like high school at the time. I was a high school boy. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, but I remember one of my best friends in high school watched it every week, and for the reason why he watched it, he was like, "Oh my God, they're all so hot on there." <laughs> <laughs> And I'll never forget that. And that is always my like, one defining memory of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. That's so funny. I have a lot of very grown men, even in the beginning, who used to come up to me and say, can I can I take a picture with you? It, 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 it's for my child. And I'd be like, <laughs> I don't think it's for your child. <laughs> but yes, you can. Have you... Um uh, there's a like. Um, what would like any of any other of your vast body of work that you'd like to revisit the way Sabrina's been revisited? Well, gosh, I mean, I've done so many indie movies that I've just loved, and and lots of different series. But I think I think you can only do one iconic series to this degree in a lifetime. Of so course. So I'm, I'm, you know, I just finished a miniseries for HBO called Love and Death, and I just finished a movie called One True Loves. And uh, so I, I keep busy, mm -hmm. and I, it's always fun to do something new. I just came back from Kentucky on a movie called The Nana Project. Which oh, is, nice. That's going to be a lot of fun. Is there anything so. you want to say about any of these? Uh, any like any more details you want to get? Well, I think you know. I think One True Loves is going to be huge, um, and I think the miniseries Love and Death is going to be a big hit for HBO. And Nana Project starts stars Mercedes Rule and Charlene Tilton and all kinds of really fun people, oh, and that's fantastic. going to be fun. Fantastic! So. I noticed uh, you actually like. Have you? Uh, you were you were on a couple episodes of the remake of Sabrina, the mm -hmm. one that came out um, on the the one that's on Netflix. Yeah. And how was that? Like, was it fun to? It revisit? was super. It was super fun to go there, and they were so excited because they grew up watching the show, mm -hmm. and so it was a really fun experience for all of us, for them and for us. We enjoyed it. Oh, awesome, awesome. And um, I also uh, I was I was pouring through your bio before we uh, you know before we started, and I noticed uh, you were also really active. In like you, you founded a, um, a um, you founded a charity for AIDS AIDS victims. Yes, in, in very early, it was the second program in the country of its kind. Yeah, called Momentum, and yeah, we provided gifts and and uh, like groceries and 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 meals and and a way for people to be less isolated because isolation was a huge problem then. And, um, yeah, 1984, when I was 23. That is amazing. I mean, I think back to when I was 23, and I could barely get out of my house. So yeah, it's I mean, I like... quit acting for five years because we had to raise money. And we, I mean, it was really very, um, it was a very difficult time. Oh. But I was grateful to be on the front lines and helping. So, I mean, as long as you're trying to make the world a better place, you can tolerate the pain, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And that is, uh, that's a legacy to be very proud of. I Thank mean, to, you. to think that, especially at that time when AIDS was 
I mean, AIDS was people known, but afraid. people were terrified. They were afraid, and people, when they're afraid, it doesn't bring out the best in them. Of course. But there were also so many people that, that stepped up and that gave and that cared. I always say, you know, I was very privileged during that time to know more than my fair share of heroes. Oh, well, so. that is really great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time of course, for us. Of I'm Allie Dash. I'm here with Below the Belt Show and Click on This Show with the very talented Cami Garcia. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? How's um, AwesomeCon going for you? Good. Wonderful. Uh, so you are such a versatile um, author. You write graphic, um, young adult graphic novels, um, novels, as well as now more adult um, comic series. Do you have a favorite um, um, thing to write? I like writing graphic novels for either age. I like writing scripts more than I like writing novels, prose novels. That's awesome. Any scripts in the works? I know Beautiful Creatures had a film, uh, and we never got any more. Uh, is there any no, plans? No, Warner Brothers has, I don't know, because Warner Brothers has, and Alcon Entertainment have the rights to Beautiful Creatures still. I have, um, I have a Constantine graphic novel coming with DC uh, on, I believe it's the 28th of of September. Then next spring, I have the fourth installment of Teen Titans, Teen Titans Robin coming out with Gabriel Piccolo. Awesome. And then I have a series with Tapas, the Tapas app. Um, my Legion series is going to Tapas, and there's going to be an episodic prose novel, and then we're adapting the three books into graphic novels. Oh, that's so those wonderful. episodic, I think, starts in August or September, and then probably around February, the uh, graphic novels will start. Very exciting. Um, and I know you are uh, the co-founder of Young Adult Fest, which is amazing. I've been, I've wanted to go for years. That's really fun. Uh, so that's Adult Fest. And now fantastic. it's like much bigger and it has a board and lots of people that work on it. That's fantastic. Do you um, see it um, venturing out to anywhere yeah, else in the Yeah, there's a sister States? festival. The biggest Young Adult Festival in the country is the sister festival, Y'all West, that's in L.A. every year. We'll have, definitely have to make plans for fun. the East Coast as well, because uh, I would love to go. Oh, yeah, um, it's really fun. It's Y'all West, the date changes. Y'all Fest is always the second Friday and Saturday of November. How is, um, do you find the difference of being here, like an awesome con versus um, the the book world? The book community is is such a huge, like... Uh, um, I mean, it's just it's just different. Um, I mean, a lot of my, the people here also read my novels. So there's a lot of crossover. That's and I've awesome. been going to Comic-Con San Diego and New York for my novels since New York started and since um, 2008 for my novels. That's fantastic. So I think there's a lot of crossover when you write fantasy. Yes, definitely. There's definitely a lot of crossover. Um, and are you familiar with the big world of book talk? And do you have any plans of uh, going I mean, on book I'm talk? Really, I have a TikTok away? account, but I'm not like, I'm a little old for TikTok, I think. <laughs> I love going on to like find things because I like to follow other TikTokers and book talkers and like find books and comics. But I, I mean, I think I have to figure out what I would do. Like, I don't really, I mean, I recommend books sometimes, but um, other than that, like, I don't know how amusing I would be on TikTok. So it's, I'm on Twitter a lot. And um, Instagram are the ones I'm the most active on. Awesome. And I have a Facebook, but aside from like posting kind of like information, I'm not really, I don't really love Facebook. Now that they're like, you know, they're, now that you can't really see the people you follow, it's yeah. not that fun. Mm -hmm. So and Twitter is still my favorite. Very cool. And do you have any passion projects or anything that you like would love to um, take part in or write? I mean, I'm really working on all the stuff. I have a couple projects that I can't talk about. And then I have a middle grade graphic novel, original graphic novel that's going to be coming out. We're not sure the date yet with first, second. So that's fun. And then, I mean, I have a lot, like I have more work than I can get done. So I have to write the top of stuff. I still am doing Teen Titans is continuing, is ongoing, and I'm doing the middle grade. So that's awesome. I love that uh, you have such a versatile age range um, for your novels. And uh, well, I taught for 17 years, so I like writing for kids and teens. The most. That's awesome. 
Well, thank you so much um, for taking the time to talk to us. And um, we look forward uh, to all of your new novels and graphic novels and seeing more. Thanks so much. Uh, you're welcome. Hey, everyone. This is Mike the General Zod here uh, from Below the Belt Show here at AwesomeCon. And as always, AwesomeCon here in D.C. lives up to its name. And I have the distinct pleasure to uh, talk to Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor, two absolute legends in the comic book industry. And first of all, I can... Uh, it, it's a it's a pleasure to talk to both of you, and um, I can first of all, how's it how's it been today? Like it's it's been good. I mean, you know, for cons are coming back right after COVID, so it wasn't like crazy today, but it was a nice, steady, busy, which we kind of prefer anyway. So it was good. Cool. Yeah, that was nice. I got to draw, so it's a good convention. Yeah, and one thing Amanda can do is draw. She's uh, you probably uh, she's. Probably, at least in, in my mind, the thing I, I know you best from is both, well, actually both of your work on Harley Quinn, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I know there's, uh, like, a ton of other stuff. I mean, like, you know, you can even see in this poster, like, your amazing She-Hulk, your amazing... The, Power Girl. Yeah, Power Girl. Oh, yeah, Power Girl. How could I forget? The boob window. Yes. <laughs> So um, I guess the uh, one of the one of the biggest questions I have is like uh, tell me tell me some of the biggest projects that you're proud of and like stuff you're working on now. Well, I mean I, I think one of my favorite pro projects that I've ever worked on is Power Girl, Harley Quinn, and the Pro, uh -huh. and and some Painkiller Jane also. And I know I'm forgetting something because it's the end of the day Vampirella, at the convention. Maybe Vampirella, yeah. Maybe. And and I'm so tired and I can't remember them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's quite all right because yeah, the uh, like one of the ones I'll, I'll always uh, remember, and I think you wrote it. It was an issue of Harley Quinn where you kind of stole a, a, a storyline from Fantastic Four with the uh, the cows where you as a rebirth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That but was, yeah, that was me uh, going back to my Fantastic Four days. Uh, it's when the scrolls turned into this. Yeah, the house. yeah. I kind of did it yeah. with another aliens, and then they got slaughtered. Yeah. Uh, yeah really did you get? Did you get? A, did you get a lot of like uh, pushback or? No, I, from you know that? we we slaughtered them and they made hot dogs out of it, and then everybody became zombies because they ate the hot dogs yeah. that were made out of aliens. So it was just it was my little love letter to Jack and uh, and Stan. Okay, well that's that is really really great. And speaking of love letters to old Marvel. I mean, it's a, a it's a um, it's kind of an understatement to say you're a big reason why Marvel is no longer it isn't bankrupt and it's become one yes. thing yes, they, today. They should write me a nice check one day, <laughs> uh, but it will never happen. Uh, but yeah. anyway, well, yeah, when we uh, when Joe and I did Marvel Nights, they were in chat. They were going in chapter eleven. Yeah, and um, so when you're sort of like panicking and in, in that space, you kind of will do anything. And one of the things they did is hire us to come in and do Marvel Nights, and they gave us the penthouse of the building on Park Avenue, and we picked four titles to run with, and it worked out pretty good for them. It put them uh, back in a good place uh, where uh, studios started looking at the characters again. And uh, and then they, then they got bought by Disney for $4 billion. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, and so do you, when you watch uh, any MCU movie, are you like, damn it? No, I, I sit there and I, I wait for the credits to see if I have a thank you. Okay. Uh, so far, only one have done it. One movie has done it. Which one was that? Uh, it was actually TV shows. I think it was. No, it was a movie. I think there was one of the one. Of, Hawkeye had on it because it had Echo on it, right? Oh Joe yeah. Joe and I and uh, David Mack. Uh, oh yeah, I think it was the, the Black Widow movie. Was it? Yeah, the Black Widow yeah, movie. Yeah. yeah, because I was editor on the book. Uh, yeah. The Black Widow series from Marvel Knights, which they base Yelena on, because she uh -huh. was created in the yeah. series we worked on. Um, but the other ones they didn't. I, I was I waited for Black Panther like the whole movie, <laughs> and I kept looking for my name. And I'm like, going, okay, not only did we co-create some of these characters yeah. in the movie, but I didn't even get a thank you. <laughs> and I so that was like a nasty phone call I had to have and say, why did the hell wouldn't I get a thank you on this? And um, yeah, and that happened a lot actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, so shame on Marvel, um, yeah. but they're trying better now. So my name is popping up on certain things. But you know, thank you and a dollar gets you how much? <laughs> exactly, one dollar. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, well, would, it, a... it would be nice if we you know, were like, I don't know. 
given a t-shirt or something, you know? Well, there's a there, there's been a lot of talk now about, like, you know, a lot of creators of, like, a lot of these properties. I mean, they are fighting back. They're getting uh, a lot more credit and... Uh, well, they're not getting a lot more money, so uh, okay. they're getting thank yous. Some of them get a credit here and there. Some get a couple of dollars. Uh, DC's been a lot more generous. Have they? Uh, yeah, yeah, Mar- than Marvel, sure, sure. Um, but it's still like, still we we probably make less money than the uh, key grip number seven guy. Oh, you know? okay. And uh, you know, and then you watch a movie where it's like they take parts of the comics, the screenwriter takes parts of the comics and makes it into a movie. But only the screenwriter is credited, and not the guys who actually wrote the original stuff. If you think about it, you watch these movies; they're taking like three or four writers' things from the uh-huh. comic, and then the screenwriter is smashing them together. Well, I think the credit should read screenplay by this guy, original stories based on these guys. I mean, it's just it's it's pretty shameful yeah. how they don't take care of their they people don't, and they don't, don't credit respect the creators so yeah. much <laughs> yeah the creators are, look image comics was a fight pushback event uh-huh. comics was a pushback yeah. um these companies have guys that are in comics running parts of them right and shame on them for not stepping up for the creators uh, yeah. so that's why a lot of creators like us we have to go and do our own things because at the end of the day uh there is no there is no retirement there is no 401k and there is no medical coverage no matter how big you become at these companies so yeah it's really sucky i love the people love the movies but if even one percent of the movie profit was given to creators we would all be in such a better place but sadly that doesn't happen well i mean there there, there's always the hope i mean yeah i hope you know hope is uh, and what's the other one or is it the prayers and what's the other thing thoughts and prayers prayers. yeah it it, it, hope goes along with thoughts and prayers if you want to put them together into a nice little gift bag uh, Uh that'd be pretty good (laughs) well all right Uh, did we talk about anything it's okay absolutely i did i i was kind of curious like do you still like are you are you still friends with joe casada yeah yeah joe and i talk yeah we still own ash and painkiller jane together so yeah i'll still talk to Joe, I wish. I think last time I talked to him, I wished him a happy birthday uh, a while back. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's you know he's now he's on to other things. Right? Yeah, he uh, just re- he just resigned. I mean, uh, just retired from Marvel. I think Joe's retired. I think he's buying a place in Boca Raton, and he's going <laughs> to. Uh, no, I'm kidding. He's on to other things. Joe's going to work in some uh, of his own film stuff and everything. You, you know, creative people just keep creating. Uh-huh. Let's be honest. All the great people we love that are no longer with us were creating till the day they die. So uh, it's an interesting business for sure. Okay, and it looks like we are. <laughs> it looks like I did want to ask um, Amanda about like your influences, but I don't know. If we'll oh, they'll stop in one time. Make your final purchases. Hold the thought. Make yeah. Your final okay, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so Amanda, can you tell me about some of your influences and probably, probably my uh, my biggest influences um, are my mom and dad because they are both artists. Okay. And there was always art supplies lying around the house, so it was really easy to draw stuff. Were you a comics yeah. geek from uh, oh, as yeah. a kid? Yes. Um, like uh, my first uh, tooth fairy gift was a nickel and a Mad magazine. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I started early and. Uh, my, my father had wanted to be a comic book artist when he grew up, and kids didn't get uh, encouraged to be comic book artists back in the 1950s. But when I decided I wanted to be a comic book artist, uh, my parents were really, really encouraging. All right, so we had to stop by some of the incredible artists that are featured here at Awesome Con. Here in Adriana Mello, Aww. artist extraordinaire. <laughs> I'm looking at your artwork and I'm so blown away by the talent. Aww, thank you. As a Star Wars fan, I, I love the uh, your Force Awakens uh, poster. Tell us a little bit about your inspiration um, to get into art uh-huh. and who are some of your artists that you've been influenced by in your artwork? Uh, I love, since I began working uh, with comic books and it's been at least 15 years, Yeah. Adam Hughes and Alan Davis, they were like my two biggest source of reference for everything, inspiration, etc. Two great names. In Adam Hughes, uh, especially Adam Hughes for uh, color, composition, etc. So even for those, um, the the art war, the, the Star Wars 
pieces I have here, Game of Thrones, uh, oh. Wonder Woman, everything. There's a lot of, you know, the uh, influence from uh, Adam Hughes' work. I see Adam Hughes. He's known for, like, the, the bad girl art, you yeah. know? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I certainly see some of the influences here. Uh, right here, No Justice, Riverdale. Um, it seems like uh, a lot of your art is female focus. Yes. Would that be uh, fair to assume? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. Now, um, tell us who are some of your favorite fandoms to uh, illustrate for. Oh, I worked for like two years for uh, Titan Comics drawing a comic book about the no uh, ninth Doctor. Oh, nice. So I, 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 I love, love, love Doctor Who. I'm a Whovian myself. Oh, good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and also love everything related to Star Wars. So yes. those are the two things I love the most to, to, to draw. Awesome. I can see right away <laughs> your fandom shows through yeah. and the Star Wars art and the Doctor Who art that you have yes. here today. Wow. Adriana, thank you so much oh, for talking to us here. For, for Blow the Bell Show, me. click on this. And more artists to be featured yet to come. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Mike the General Zod, and we are here at Awesome Con, which always lives up to its name. And I'm here with the amazing friend of the show, Blaney. Lainey Fenimore and her equally amazing sister Reed, <laughs> who's a, a little newer to the cosplay game, but first it, Comic Con. First Comic Con. First I'm in yeah. there. Yeah, and uh, two amazing and beautiful Supergirls to go with my kind of okay, you know, mid 2000s Superboy shirt. <laughs> I love it though. Next time maybe we could step it up a little bit though. Yeah, well, I was I was going for there was a period in, where Superboy he would just wear yeah. like a black T-shirt with true? like with uh, with jeans. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for yeah, here. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah, good. just giving you a hard time. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise people would be like, oh my god, he's here. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, oh my god, they, would, they wouldn't leave you alone. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't deal with crowds, as yeah. you can tell. <laughs> so, how has it been with you guys today? Um, today was crazy, but it was awesome. <laughs> um, I got to talk to a lot of people. I got to meet a lot of new people. Um, I got to do a panel with loading snacks, and I was nervous as heck, but uh, it was fun. And I did a meetup earlier. Met what, some people there. What was the meetup like? Like, what did uh, you do? <laughs> there was like five people there, but they were a great five people, and it was a super fam Kryptonian meetup. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was it was a niche, uh, real small niche group there, but it was it was fun. Awesome. Yeah. What about for you? This is your first Kitten Con. First Con, and um, I mean it's a lot, <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun and taking pictures, and I got to get the Supergirl. Supergirl pose down, um, but just seeing Lainey like in her in her zone and atmosphere has also just been a lot of fun. Seeing it, awesome. Um, has it been like? Uh, have you got to like meet a lot of new people and like a lot of like she get has, this? She has met all of my friends for the past eight years yeah. in oh, one okay. day. So. And even just new people, I've gotten on Instagram. They're like, "Oh, can I get your answer?" I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new to this, but yes, please. Is this something you think you're going to continue doing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. I would have to pick a new. I couldn't just be Supergirl. She's Supergirl. Yes, yeah, well, if gotta, I did, she's got to get her own vibe. Get my own. Yeah, vibe. it's a shame there are no other yeah, blonde just, superhero yeah. heroines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't follow always in my sister's bus. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think coming here and just seeing her is fun for me right now. But maybe one day. <laughs> maybe one day. Well, that is so cool. The uh, sure you're a proud big sis. Very proud big sis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's doing well for her first con. <laughs> <laughs> so what else have you got? Like, uh, are you going to be here tomorrow too? Yes. Uh, I was going to wear another Supergirl, but I think I just saw um, Maverick, new Top Gun movie, and uh -huh. I have like a real um, flight suit with patches and stuff on it, so I think I might just wear that tomorrow. Yeah, I remember. Just... I've seen that. I've seen that on your yeah, Insta. And, yeah, and it's comfy, and I'm covered up, and I can eat all the food I want without <laughs> feeling like my tummy's hanging out. You can wear normal shoes. Yeah, I can wear like boots. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. 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 It'll it'll be it'll be a good one tomorrow. Well, rock on! It has been awesome talking to both of you yeah, at Awesome too. Con. 
and um, you know.